ask you know anybody you know a conductor a pianist and say find me a Stravinsky piece that's happy um, it doesn't happen incredibly often there are things that are very dramatic there are things things that are very soothing but but joy in Stravinsky sometimes is a little bit in in short supply um, so yeah that's that's a, an interesting does it remind you of anything does it remind you of other music at all familiar almost I couldn't <laughs> quite place where that was the thing it's like I heard it and I think it was partially because of the singing that happens within it that kind of made me think of some like the more like opera-esque things that I've listened to or you know things like that um I guess um interesting thing is that um str some of this material in Pulcinella, in fact, a lot of it isn't by Stravinsky at all. It's, it's by, um, a, it's a, some of it is attributed to an 18th century composer named Pergolesi. And even some of that, and there are several other composers involved as well. But the man who commissioned Pulcinella, uh, uh, a man named Diaghilev, uh, gave Stravinsky a big pile of manuscripts from the 18th century, and they, he said, "Well, these are by Pergolesi. See what you think. I'd like to. I'd like you to make a ballet out of this if you can." And Stravinsky at the time said, "You've got to be kidding me!" <laughs> it's like this is. And then he started looking through it, and he started uh, saying, "This is amazing stuff." And that's why I allude to the fact that his music in Pulcinella doesn't sound like. You know those ballets from before the Rite of Spring, the piece that caused a riot in Paris at his first performance. People evidently people th throwing throwing punches, um, but uh, yeah, uh, some people say that 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 wasn't true. But I I think it makes a better story with with the fist fight. But Polchinella, uh, Stravinsky was like a lot of artists after the First World War was looking for different uh, a different aesthetic. He was looking for a different style. He wanted something more organized. He wanted something that was clear, where his, his other music is, it's beautiful. It's got these big washes of sound, you know, an orchestra of 120 players. And this is, this is a whole different thing. It's, it's a lot, you hear individual parts better. In other words, you hear different voices much more clearly than you do in maybe some of the, some of the earlier works. And this is because he, he took these pieces and he turned them into, he made them his own. It sounds like Baroque or classical music, but not quite. <laughs> you know, there's, there's these little strange changes of harmony, these little extensions of rhythm that make it, that he makes it very, very much at, at his own. And uh, it's, it's a, a fascinating kind of synthesis, which uh, kind of brings me to my next question is, um, you know, do you think it's now that you know that? Do you think it sounds like plagiarism? In other words, you know, in, in our time, if you did something like that, you know, the um, you know the, the publishing police would be after you. But uh, is it? Do you think it sounds well? I mean, a better way to phrase it: Do you think it sounds like Baroque music, or does it sound like Stravinsky, or is it somewhere in between? I kind of feel like this in between, but at the same time, when I was listening, it did make me think Baroque. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel like it is Baroque more than anything, or at least in Baroque style, right. like the stylization. Because it kind of makes me think of if you have listened to lots of classical music and then listened to the soundtrack for like the original Star Wars, you realize how much of it yeah. um, John Williams took from classical music. You can find particular spots that are yes. so yeah, like, heavily informed. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. am I listening to this piece or the soundtrack, you know? In yeah. Star Wars, um, like, it seems very likely that he copies Mars by Gustav Holt. Mm -hmm. And in The Empire, the Darth Vader's theme song. Mm -hmm. and yeah, very similar. So yeah, they are very similar. Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, in fact, Stravinsky had a great, uh, it wasn't specifically about this piece, but a remark that was attributed to Stravinsky, and sometimes you hear it, that maybe Pablo Picasso, the great 20th century painter, said it, 
is that lesser ar artists borrow, great artists steal. Yeah. Which I thought, for this piece especially, is kind of kind of an interesting remark. In that, um, to me, I don't. I think it's Stravinsky, but you know, this is more than you know, taking Baroque music and making an arrangement out of it. Right? It sounds, you know, to me, there's so much Stravinsky in it that uh, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily feel like Baroque music, even though there are some things that sound like it. Um, sometimes the instrumentation does it. You know, there, I don't know if you heard the one section of the piece that's a duet between trombone and double bass. And you know, speaking of Stravinsky being being uh, happy, this is one of Stravinsky being funny. And it's just a marvelous, marvelous moment in, in the whole piece. So yeah, that, that uh, it's sort of somewhere between, but I sort of err on the side is that Stravinsky took the basics and made his own piece out of it. Mm -hmm. So one part, the variación de this, so the second, ver, so the second variation mm -hmm. in Allegro più tosto moderato, at that part, um, there's the flute. It's it's like a kind of like a, not flute solo, but the flute's the main like it's like the main protagonist basically in of the piece. Yes. And the flute is playing, and every once in a while, you can hear quintuplets and septuplets, and like no, just quintuplets, and then groups of eleven and twelve notes. And in Faiso right now, we're playing a piece called Bacchanal and Finale. And basically in that piece, we also have septuplets and, it, and it's like where it's like the septuplet, it's a scale going upwards and then it hits like the big like harmony where everyone's playing together. And that, that moment happens in the second variation mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I remember that from, um, I think we talked before uh, that there's a violin and piano version of this piece as well. And I do remember that section. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly trying to get to the downbeat on time was the yeah was the, was the big thing about it. Mm 